So recently your name came up when Diddy said he was going to give the bad boy artist the rights and royalties to their music back. And I want to say I believe you were the first one who reacted. So today I want to go over the music that you did with bad boy from the hit records to the feature records to writing records to even smash number one records that you were involved in. I'm going to give you a dollar sign to go so you can know that what they do like every couple of quarters. Can you tell me about Diddy calling you when he decided to give the artists back their publishing? He was like, I'm taking this love thing serious. And I was like, that's real. I said, that's good. And me, I'm, you know, like I told you, I'm a, I'm a kind hearted individual. I was like, well, if you feel like today is the day that you want to make those changes in life, I want to say congratulations to you first for coming to this point. And if you're willing, if you're trying to take this thing that you call love serious and you're willing to change yourself, then I'm willing to change some things about me too so we can have a better friendship. Maybe we can prosper, get on the road again, do some shows. Maybe we can buy some houses and rehab them. Like, that's what I do. And he was like, yeah, we could talk about all of that. We could talk. So then I, I stopped selling the book. I took the book off the market because I was like, okay, if he's going to change and I don't want to call him that no more, you know, I want to change too. So I was like, I took the book off the market and I was waiting to hear back from him and I never heard from him. And I was like, I can't take my book off the market that actually makes me money because you may not like it. When if you want me to take the book off the market, why don't you just pay me enough money where I just take it off the market. And it's like you bought all the copies. Why don't you just buy? I tell you what you do: buy a million copies, and then, then I won't, I won't, I won't sell the book no more. Buy five hundred thousand. Buy a hundred thousand copies is good, right? That would have been a good idea. Look, I buy a hundred thousand copies of your book for you to not sell it no more. Bet you shelved everything else in life. You shelf my career. Shelf this book. The shelf it, right? No, it didn't work. And he he ain't good at shelfing everything. I wanted him to shelf the book. Let's get rid of this book. That never happened. Book is still around today. One of the greatest books of all times. Dancing with the Devil by Mark Curry. How Puff burnt the bad boys of hip hop. If you don't have a copy, get two copies. <laughs> what was the first bad boy project you remember being recorded in front of your eyes? It was I Dare You when I was on the I Dare You Black Rob video. I dare you to come against me. That was it. That was my first one. I was in the video. Sitting at the desk with the locks and all of that. All of us was in that video. We were all on the up and coming bad boy roster. Watch the I Dare You video by Black Rob. See if you can find me. Now, were you around Puff during any of the No Way Out album recording? No, I wasn't with him around. I was just there for the shows, the tour. After after I got on tour with him, the album was being promoted. So he, he didn't have to work on that album. We was working on Godzilla. Harlem World by Mace and Money, Power, and Respect by The Locks followed No Way Out. So we're talking about legendary music right here. But The Locks seemed to have a lot of issues. Were you around to see the bad blood between The Locks and Diddy? Yeah, I was there to see it, but you wouldn't you wouldn't understand what they beef was. You'd be like, you know, I don't, you know, it's a lot of times you got artists who didn't even understand what publishing was about. Like, it was always a smart artist and a dumb artist. You always had, uh, um, uh, uh, you got Eric B and Rakim. What are they problems now? Was it because? Eric B knew about publishing and he was the one that handled the finances and was the one that did it. And then maybe, you know, Rakim found out one day that he was being shortchanged and then the group broke up. Was it like EPMD when um, Eric was found out that Paris was the one that was in control of things, he found out then they broke up. So, you know, um, publishing and deals have always ruined business and artist relationships. So to answer your question, you had a lot of artists that were around. Yes, I, I, I had them, seen them all. I knew a lot of their complaints. 
but a lot of them didn't even know their complaints. Did Diddy seem like nervous dealing with the locks? Because they were a bit grittier than some of his other artists. Diddy never really felt nervous about dealing with too many people at all. Not that I noticed, because he had a, 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 a strong team of security. It wasn't about Diddy. It's like, man, he, he, he got security. You just can't smack a man that has security. But if he didn't have no security, they might have tried him a few times. Well, because you upstairs in the lounge talking to him, his security outside, security's outside again, security's in the car. How am I going to pull this off? You got to smack about eight people. I thought about it a couple of times, but I was like, I don't see me being able to get out like that. Mace left before the release of his sophomore album or shortly thereafter, Double Up, in 1999. Did you notice any dissension between Diddy and Mace? Mace just old Puff albums. So it was like, you can't, you can't get off of this deal with me until you and, and our contract, it says that you're going to give me X amount of albums. And you only gave me, you only delivered two. So before you can even think that you're going to get off, you're going to have to give me two more albums. And then I, I seen where he tried to speed up albums. Let me just give him this album. Let me just give him anything. And then I guess if he didn't release them and title and title them as albums, then he still was in control. It's like even though you gave me an album for two songs, I mean you gave me two two albums worth of songs. If I don't never release them, then you still gonna keep owing me those two albums. If I release this, if I'm happy with it and I release it, that's gonna be one off under your notch. But if I'm not happy with it and you know you're not producing you using my producers, you're not doing it the way that I want to do it, then we're not doing it. I don't want to use that producer that you found. He's not my producer. I don't make money with your producer. I make money with my producers. So it's a hot song, but if I didn't produce it, I'm not doing nothing with it. Well, I'm gonna make everybody else rich. That was puff. <laughs> 